Yes, the, the government's begun this quantitative easing program. Um, how quickly do you think that is going to start feeding into the real economy? Well, I know I'm in the minority of uh, uh, one, uh, certainly about people that will speak publicly on this, uh, but I think future historians will wince at what we're doing. Uh, I think fiscal and monetary policy are now wildly expansionary. Uh, I think deflation in the UK is largely a myth. CPI inflation is still well above the Bank of England's target. Uh, we've got all this monetary expansion to come. We're running a, a budget deficit, 10% of GDP. Uh, government borrowings, the highest since it's been since the Second World War. We've seen sterling lose a third of its value. And we import huge amounts of goods in this country. Of course, they'll be more expensive with that sterling fall. Yeah. So even if we see one or two or three months of lower inflation from where we are going forward, as the base effects of oil at $147 last summer feed through, mm. I think by the end of this year, we'll be looking at a problem that's about inflation, not deflation. So we should be rushing out and buying uh, inflation index gilts while they're still at relatively good prices. I think there's something in that. I think what a lot of people, you see what's happening in, in the gold markets. Uh, people using gold as a hedge. You see people using land, timber, water and wood as a hedge. We're starting to see the basis of this now in the oil markets uh, with, yeah. again, despite newspapers around the Western world banging on about demand destruction, mm. we're actually seeing futures markets pointing upward strongly ever more. Um, Hugh, this is somewhat at odds with your view this morning, <laughs> isn't it? Let's, uh, let's bring you into the conversation around the desk. I mean, Liam, Liam's put out a case. Yeah, sure, but uh, I, I, I'm sure the viewers who've been, if they've been watching the show on a loop now for, for a while, will have noticed something. That these guys keep coming on, and they keep saying the same thing, but they keep thinking it's a minority view, right? It is, Liam, you, you ain't a contrarian, right? It is not. Well, a, it is not. It is not. Hey, with respect, it is not a minority. It is not a minority. It is not a minority view. It is not a minority view to say you want to buy index-linked bonds. It is not a minority view to say that you believe there's going to be inflation and that you're shorting bonds. You are so consensual. Yeah. Please do not. I mean, best of luck with that strategy, but don't perceive yourself to be contrarian. You're contrarian in the sense that you're going against a trend. That's all, right? Now, there are people, again, in the real world who are losing jobs, who are fearful that they're going to lose jobs. M marriages are breaking up. This is the greatest so you economic collapse. You can be one collapse. example from history where quantitative easing has actually worked. You can be one example from history where higher inflation has helped jobs, has helped economic stability, has helped people make long-term investments. I'm not going to be told that I'm against people keeping their job because I've got 200 years of policy evidence on my side. This is a nuts policy. No. Everyone knows it's a nuts policy, but no one wants to talk about it because no one wants to be seen to be against people getting their jobs back. But there's an old saying that says, you know, the reality is no one, Liam, knows anything, right? Okay. But in the investment business, a lot of people who know absolutely nothing come on television and claim they know a lot, right? Now, the reality Clearly. is, the reality is, quantitative easing does not work, okay? Mm. That's why we shouldn't be fearful of inflation, Liam. It doesn't work. We are in a sliding economy. Now, what is it sliding, right? We're talking about a nominal contraction in the British economy. The last time that happened, Liam, was 1949. So the notion that the government can sit idly by and do nothing and why is, is that, just Why is that happening? Why is that nominal contraction happening? That it's happening because the interbank market remains locked, because banks don't trust each other, because they, they, they're not being forced to clear out their balance sheets. We're not allowing weak banks to fail. It's as clear as the nose on my face and yours, Hugh. What good is quantitative easing going to do? It's just going to further wreck the macroeconomic context in which these hard, tough financial decisions have to make, yeah. take place. Creative huge, destruction has to I come through the banking system. I think there's not a huge system. gap between us, actually. Um, the misinterpretation, I think, between us is we both I'm agree... Quite clear we both about what agree I've said. I've misinterpreted The misinterpretation bet between the two of us. Um, I know that your head is firmly lodged somewhere, but um, the misinterpretation... Well, let's not, let's the not misinterpretation make it personal. Let me step believe, in if we can't have a we believe, sensible, rational conversation. We believe, <laughs> right, we believe that quantitative easing cannot succeed, OK? Now, I, my, I then take it one step further and say you shouldn't worry about inflation, OK? Because if quantitative easing can't succeed in this environment, mm. then it is profoundly deflationary, OK? And that's why then I argue that if you can get 4% on a government British bond, then you should be embracing that as a safe and secure investment rather than speculating in gold or corporate, gov uh, corporate bonds which have commercial risk.
Yeah. I fail to see how an enormous increase in base money can be uh, deflationary. I fail to see how massive guilt issuance, huge government borrowing generally, uh, uh, and, and a so wildly expansion monetary you policy think it's can, 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 be, can be deflationary. It strikes me that I am pretty much the only national newspaper columnist, uh, Hugh, and that's where the, the, the political consensus is made, I'm afraid, rather than in the markets, who's been arguing this view. Let's um, take a quick break. We're going to pay for the programming, but we still have people that are willing to pay for the programming. Um, Liam, we'll be back with you in just a second. If you're happy to stay with us, we'll be happy to pick up the conversation. Uh, Squatbox Europe at TNBC.com is our email address. We're going to take that break. We'll see you on the other side of the commercials. Through not least uh, government borrowing. Liam, I just want to get one more in. I'm sure Hugh wants to come back as well. But it just it, let's say you're right and QE is a dismal failure and we have got this huge inflationary argument and then uh, Hugh potentially is wrong that we aren't suffering this longer term deflation. It's quite easy, well, not uh, quite easy, but it's easier to turn off the inflationary tap once we see it than turn off this deflationary problem that we've got at the moment. I mean, there are measures we can do. We can take that QE money out of the system. We can raise rates. We can do a lot of stuff to get rid of the inflation, can't we? I know, I know that's the line, but I fear. Uh, for that policy. Once the, tooth the inflationary toothpaste is back in the tube, it's very hard to get it back in. And is this really the best way to tackle the problem that we face? The problem that we face is an interbank market that's locked. So surely to unlock that interbank market, we need to take the very difficult decisions here in the UK and the US. Shareholders who back bad banks that pursued wrong strategies, you know, they need to be that they're going to lose their shirt, and so they should. I agree there's an argument about the bondholders in these banks, but they're going to need a haircut as well. In the end, you have to let these banks fail, because Japan didn't let those banks fail. You had a decade of zombie banks. We've created zombie banks in the US and zombie banks in the UK. Shareholders don't want to hear it, but at the moment, what's happening with the banking stocks is dragging down the whole of the rest of the economy. Hugh? I mean, you know, Liam's got a loud voice. Um, he's a kind of scary guy. Um, I respect him. Well, just I, I tackle my arguments <laughs> rather than insulting me. I, 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 Why do you do that? You, you, I, because, you demean yourself, you. Because, you, you know, it, it's important. You're not a rational person. Um, but I do actually... I, I applaud. <laughs> I applaud your spirit. Um, I applaud... Well, just tackle what where, I've said. I applaud where you are with the notion of, you know, we should be tackling the banks. I applaud your courage and your conviction to say that quantity, quantitative easing won't succeed. Where we differ is in an understanding of economics because if you take on board everything that you say, and by and large I agree with everything that you say, you do end up rationally, in a rationally mannered mind, concluding that we are confronted with, with deflation. Can I just add that this is a very interesting debate and we've got viewers all over the world watching this debate. Pete in Seattle writes in. This is not happening in. anywhere else. Pete yeah. writes in from Seattle. I'm going to get a word in, Liam. Uh, it says, nights <laughs> I spent as a cop arresting drunk drivers in Los Angeles were less contentious <laughs> than this debate at the moment. Martin, you've got some flashes. We 